whenever I have eye contact with Lucas, I feel that he remembers that I was the one that gave him a chance as main handler at a young age. And now we can see what he's doing. Hallelujah. I'm from Italy. There is a very old saying. When you make the law, the moment you are producing a new law, you are thinking how to break it. I'm telling you because I had a, an argument with Yorgos uh, some years ago, two years ago, and we solved it with an amazing bottle from Santorini. Amazing. How is it coming back to Athens for you? 28 degrees. I'm from Lithuania. Amazing. Uh, are there any regrets or what ifs regarding to your time as a head coach of the regrets? Greek national team? No, one of the best lessons of my life. Great experience, great players, a country with a lot of feelings, a lot of emotion for basketball. I'm still in contact with Nikos, with Billy. You know, I met every year many Greek players and and uh, whenever I have eye contact with Lucas I feel that he remembers that I was the one that gave him a chance as main handler at a young age and now we can see what he's doing during that time you talked about the so-called 11 million coaches in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle all that kind of pressure and the social media comments after that lesson? You don't handle it. So simple? Very simple, very simple. Everybody can express his opinion. Uh, I don't chase that. My goal is not that people may like me. My goal is to do the best possible job and to be the best version of myself. I will never let me be defined by social media will say, from what they say, or from the final scoreboard of a game, because it's something that is not under my control, but from relations with the players, with the, the growing pains of a, of a season, it's all this, I, I live for that, so I have z zero regrets, means that was a great experience and uh, it's almost 11 years, so I can, you gotta live on regrets. If you ask me, would I do something different um, with the experience I have now, I would may agree with you. Is it possible to separate the coach from the man in a hard long season? In Euroleague? Is it possible to separate the man from the journalist in a long season? Is it possible to separate the man from a player? I don't think so. But why to separate it? Embrace it. Uh, do you think that is there basketball justice when jobs, reputations, and perhaps bank accounts are judged, for example, by one single shot? I stop you now. There's no justice. Okay. Word is unfair. Life is unfair. Every job can be unfair. But it is what it is. Let's walk through this. Please let's, let's jump on a basketball boat because you said that if your league is a sea, mm -hmm. you cannot be a white shark, but you don't want to be a small fish to be eaten. Mm -hmm. I that... had great fish on the, at, the, at dinner, it was on the grill, but it finished very early. Mm -hmm. In that case, what was your big opening night win against Barcelona? Uh, we played a strong game. We played a game without any fear. Uh, I don't know how many games we are going to win with finesse plays, with uh, 
you know, plays with pure talent here. Or we have some talent, but I believe that it was a game where for 40 minutes, without looking at the scoreboard, we had zero fear and we didn't over respect a powerhouse like Barca and we played to win every single possession. You always say that coaches are happy in August and September. What are the expectations from the season and what will make you happy in May? The same thing that makes me happy today or tomorrow or in one week. To see my players improving, to see my teams improving, to see some wins, okay. Uh, but um, I don't want that the final result of a game can define what I'm doing, okay? This is what you do. I'm very good with that, but I cannot go in this. I don't want, I don't want to talk about achievements. I want to talk about what we are going to do today, tomorrow, what we are going to do after a win, what we're going to do after a loss, how we can handle a bad result, how we can handle a good result. This is all the, the journey that I have in front. And don't look too far. Okay. Uh, what do you think are the biggest differences for Zalgiris and generally for, for the league from last season? For Zalgiris and for every team, uh, it will be more and more difficult to build the roster. Very few good players, and they are aging year after year. And um, the newcomers are not there yet at the level of the veterans. EuroLeague is the oldest league you have players 35, 36, dominating the league, not just playing, not displaying only their experience, but dominating the league. So when I started to think about the roster, I saw only closed doors or not even a door, it just walls. So I tried to do something different. I tried to build a roster without uh, the looking too much, I need a point guard, I need a guard, I need this. I was looking about players. And then after when I put them together, I was I tried to think how to play them. The past summer, we read many thoughts and quotes from general managers, from coaches about unfair competition. And there's an upcoming financial fair play in EuroLeague. What's your take on that? Hallelujah one side, but uh, I'm very curious to see how we're going to apply it. You know, I'm from Italy. There is a very old saying, when you make the law, the moment you are producing a new law, you are thinking how to break it. So I want to see that because uh, it's not we are all, all looking to the NBA, but NBA, except small exception, they are all one country and Canada. The taxes are almost with difference, but almost the same. The way you pay taxes is all the same and the controls are very easy, you know, and uh, in Europe, every country is different. Even in the same countries, there are different regions. So I believe it's mandatory to have a sustainable product. It will take a little bit of time. As Bargain's coach, you said, and I quote, I'm a little bit shocked. Crisis, 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 no money, no hopes. And then boom, a lot of big trades, big names, big contracts. Has anything changed after four years? Yeah, it's even more. But um, don't, don't take me wrong. Um, we should be thankful to 
the owners of Olympiacos to Fenerbahce owner, to the owner of Panathinaikos. It's like in uh, the Renaissance period in Italy, you know, who's the best artist? I want Leonardo. You call Leonardo and you hire Leonardo. You know, Michelangelo. So this is maybe is not sustainable, but this makes Euroleague unbeatable for basketball talk. For the passion, the love, the competition, people that are having a team and they put all their passion, even sometimes too much, but on this. So this makes Euroleague on one side is unfair, on the other is amazing. A few days ago, you noted that Panathinaikos and Olympiakos have six, seven, five-star guard players. Do you think that this is something that changes basketball from the size-wise hunting or the positionless uh, versatility we usually hear about? I would like to answer this in six months. It's a trend. Uh, I'm a big fan of positionless basketball uh, because this allows you to don't go on the market when you have an injury because there's no market. Mid-season to sign a player is a nightmare. This allows you to absorb ups and downs within the roster. Okay. And, uh, but I want to see because uh, there will be some players out of rhythm, some players without minutes. So I want to see that. You said last season that Panathinaikos was something like a team of destiny. Do you believe that destiny is such a profound matter on basketball that might steal the talent, the, the, the capabilities of coaches, of players? No, they don't steal. They go with them. But they cannot go with all of them. So they go one time with one, one time with the other. Uh, what happened last year was, you know, I believe it was fully deserved. But how it happened? October? No way. November, mm, December, mm. then every month, you know, and this is usually, you have to be in the best shape in May. What you did before, really, don't count. David Blatt once said that something about a former player of yours, quoting that, I want my son to be like Nico Zissis. First of all, what do you recall from your time together with Nikos and is there any player that perhaps would say something about something similar that Coach Vlad said about? Different this? generations. Uh, I would uh, just ask you to ask everybody to observe what is now the Greek national team, how they look. They look like a club. This is the biggest achievement of the GM of the Greek national team. He is, he would be successful in any kind of role in basketball, any kind. And uh, he's a great person. And he knows what he's talking about. And the liaison between him and the coach, Billy, it's the future for Greek basketball is nice. It's looking very good. You revealed that Zalgiris player cried after Kinan Evans' injury last season. Are feelings still important, I guess, against the full professionalism in sports? He's not against. You can be fully professional, you can be the highest pro, highest level pro, sorry, but you still have a heart, a soul, emotions. You're living with your teammate more than with your wife. You're sharing tons of emotions. And I hope that this will never change. So the emotional part is extremely important for me. 
from family aspirations for you going to Harvard to the hard task, as we read, to convince your parents that your, your dream is coaching. What made you choose basketball back then? Do you know any better sports? No. Speed, quick decision, athleticism, toughness. And there's no rain inside the gym. Fans are close, push you over the limit. What's better than this? There is a battle between choices and responsibility as a player and as a coach. And there is a I, winner from this battle? I, I, cannot, I cannot put the thing together. Okay. What is the, the battle? So what is the battle for the... Uh, are there differences? No, because I mean, it's in, in good questions. So I want to understand to give you a good answer. Are there differences or separations between the choices and the responsibility? Do you, think, do you think that you have to do something as a coach? Beside you your uh, to, approach? To take, you are paid to take decisions. And you are paid to take decisions that are not pleasant. And uh, being accountable means taking decisions also. Uh, only, would, I always say, if you don't take a decision, it's like taking the wrong decision. Because sometimes people, what I have to do, and they freeze, okay? There's no battle between choices and responsibility. They are one thing. How do you define success, ambition, and what is the most important lesson you think you learned in school, from your family and from basketball? You have three hours? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, let's go with the first one. The first one is, what is success? Success is something personal. Nobody can say to you, what is your success? You will set your own goal and you are gonna play with these goals. You're gonna live with these goals. Uh, success for me is doing the best you can, night in, night out, under any circumstances, understanding your mistakes, getting over your ego, and trying to be better every day. I call it success, to me, is evolution. You evolve. To evolve in a span of years, season, in a game, you evolve in a game. Ambition is a booster, as in an enemy. Ambition is very dangerous. If you do the things only for ambition, you're gonna be unhappy. If you have an ambition to become a EuroLeague coach, an ambition to become an NBA player, this is a booster. But be ambitious just to say I'm ambitious is not. I had great luck, I had a great education, I travel all over the world, and uh, they try to install that you can be emotional, that don't be afraid to be emotional, and don't be afraid to follow to have passion, passion in what you're doing. You thought that coaches Barjokas and Saras would, would solve their premier incident with some wine. Uh, who is the opponent that coach Andrea Trincheri likes to share a battle with? Oh, I said that I hope they're going to solve because I have the biggest respect for both of them. And uh, it's a little bit early to start with this thing in the season of game one. There are other 33, game, 33 games to do this, but um, there's a lot of on, the, on, on the grill, a lot of things out there. Um, we battle every week. Tomorrow I have to play against Yorgos. Yorgos is one, uh, I believe two, three years ago I was playing at Piraeus and after the second quarter, I turned, they were killing me, killing us. So I turned to my assistant and say, man, they are playing like Brazil of the 1970s. So the best basketball 
ever, ever. The ball never on the floor, always in the air, always passing, moving, cutting. It was like an orchestra, okay? So, and every week you're gonna face a big coach. Every week you're gonna face a big player or more than one. Every week you're gonna face a great team. So it's, it will be a battle, but in a positive way. I don't want to reduce this, uh, me against him. You know, I'm, I feel that I'm very blessed because I have very good tickets for the best basketball show in Europe. And is there any coach, any opponent that you would like to share a bottle with? Many of them. And I did it already, so... I'm telling you because I had a, an argument with uh, Yorgos some years ago, two years ago, and we solved it with an amazing bottle from Santorini. Amazing. One of the best ever. 